Well, all right, we're back with Donald Haywood. Just the two of us tonight. Just the two of us. There's no David, no Marquez. No Don. No Don. <laughs> we need Don back. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue with lies, I guess. Lies <laughs> in the textbooks. In the textbooks. We covered, what, two last week? Yep, two last week, and the same one was the geological column does not exist. Interesting. So what do you think about the Grand Canyon, Donald? I think it's pretty grand. I think, I, I think so, too. <laughs> I'd like to go see it. <laughs> um, I've flown over it several times, but I've never been there. And the first lie was that the Grand Canyon was not formed over millions of years. That's a fact. And the uh, Noah's Flood carved it in about 20 minutes. But the evolutionists say that the Colorado River carved it in 200 million years time. Well, That river has shrunk a lot, then. It sure has. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at it on that computer. Yeah. That car and all that. <laughs> it shrunk a lot. <laughs> but, Don, if the layers are different ages, why are there no erosion marks? So, if that were true, if you would notice, look, the, the water, clay, silt, sand, and gravel. They all, they all try to prove that for millions of years. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, the Permian. Um, but we'll figure, we'll find out that that's not true. Because you can buy a, one of those sand mixers at Walmart, mm -hmm. and you can get... And you can get clay, silt, sand, and gravel all in one one box in just a matter of two or three minutes. Pretty interesting. You ever seen one of those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they tried to... Well, this is that, but they tried to... Um, oh, no. <laughs> Low battery. Don? Huh? What I'll do is I'll. Yeah. So if you get the concept, what they say that this is, that they say the lowest layers are obviously the oldest. Now, Don, let's talk about that. Why do they think that? I don't know. Well, you know, well, let's get into it. So, in Rapid City, there is a museum where they try to teach circular reasoning. You ever heard of circular reasoning? Yeah. I have not hard enough time with regular reasoning. That, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> So, this area right here set, says that, that this bone, this skeleton, is 70 million years old. Okay. That's pretty old, isn't it? That's pretty old. So, scientists use index fossils to uh, determine the age of rock layers. Well, here's how it goes. Index fossils date... The rock layers that's what they say but over here it says that it's 100 million years old well it's the same the same skeleton right looks like it essentially so what's the di what's the difference well circular reasoning is strata dated by the fossil then the fossil dated by the strata does that make sense and if you get the chart right here, we're all we're all related from the microcell amoeba right here, all the way to the bird, 
all the way to lions, tigers, and bears. Okay. That's evolution 101. What do you think about that? I think it's a lie. I don't think they know. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. So you got... I think they're reasoning this off. I think it is too. <laughs> so the fact of it is that... Okay. Let's suppose, just supposing, they find uh, clams, fish, and animals like that at the very bottom. So that's why they say, if you get this chart right here, that's why they say you got this little um, trilobite, one of the oldest critters in the world, they say. Okay. So at the very bottom, they would be the first to be buried in a flood, right? Probably. You know, now let's suppose that there's today a wildfire in South Africa all the animals and all the people are going to go to higher ground. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the flood. They're going to mm -hmm. go, you know, to higher ground. So they'll be, you know, it's brain density. A clam probably isn't too bright. Probably not. But we'll get into this in um, a few more weeks. Um, and, um, that there are clams on Mount Everest in the closed position. Now, what on earth could have done that? Don't know. Rapid burial. Could have floated for a while. Yeah. But you know, in Psalms it says that the mountains arose, the valleys sank down, and the waters rushed off. So if if it were to if it were able to flood you know to cover Mount Everest, it would cook the whole planet. But Mount Everest wasn't there. Because Mount Everest came when when it all when the mountains arose and the valleys sank down and water just assuaged. Pretty interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So there are nearly 12,000 different minerals, and that is fascinating. In, in heaven, did you know that there's a lot of minerals in heaven? Er earthly minerals? I didn't know that. Um, one of them is um, on the heaven's gate is a pearl mm -hmm. and their names the jasper and the onyx stone mm -hmm. um, a lot of stones up there a lot of stones up there I thought that was just pretty pretty cool um, well Don let's look at the evolutionists what the evolutionists themselves say about circular reasoning and here's our third, third lie there is, this is circular reasoning. What we just mentioned, the, you know, the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, all that is circular reasoning based off of, you know, who died first. Because they say that the fish came and then they got extinct. The dinosaurs came, and they got extinct. And then the mammals came, and most most of them got extinct, and then they evolved. So that is circular reasoning. Okay. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Go ahead, Donald. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. J. E. O'Rourke, American Journal of Science, 1976. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply to that. 
feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. So if it proves effective, you know, do it. In their, in their eyes anyway. It doesn't matter if it's a lie or a truth, you know. Um, but it cannot be denied that from a strictly phil philosophical standpoint, geologists are, are here arguing in a circle. Get it? Circular reasoning. The succession of organisms has been determined by, by the study of their remains. And uh, yeah, remains uh, embedded in the rocks, and the relative ages of the rocks are determined by the remains of organisms that they contain. Ever since William Smith, at the beginning of the 19th century, fossils have been uh, have been and still are the best, most accurate method of dating, like the fossils of you know and uh, correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from very modern examples, which are really archaeology, uh, archaeology, yeah, archaeology, <laughs> I can think of no cases radioact of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. Fascinating. So the radiometric dating would not have been feasible if the geologic column had been erected first. So, but, but he, he, you do see what he's saying though, right? Mm -hmm. Paleontologists cannot operate in this way. There is no way simply to look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks where it comes from date the fossils by the rocks kind of like um carbon dating you know how do, how do you carbon date how do they carbon date the rocks the rocks do um do date the fossils but the fossils date the rocks more accurately so, what, it's, what he's saying is that they're saying that they can tell from the rocks how, how old they, the bones are by carbon dating. They dig out the, the fossil and they carbon date it. And what really messes them up when they find um, blood samples in, in the in the bone, in the bone marrow. That really messes them up. I'm using only the temporal concepts because of, uh, because circularity is inherent in the, what is that? Derivation of time scales. Go ahead, Donald. The charge of circular reasoning in the stratigraphic, stratigraphic can be handled in several ways. It can be ignored as not the proper concern of the public. You have no right to question us. <laughs> it can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice or it can be avoided by paramatic reasoning. Are the authorities maintaining on the one hand that evolution is documented by geology and on the other that geology is documented by evolution? Isn't this a circular argument? What do you think? Yeah. Most definitely. The oldest layers are most obviously the oldest. Now how would they how would they determine that? Don't sound like they've determined it. They're just guessing. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if no, no, this is cool. So, in moving water, um, multiple layers form simultaneously with the current. Okay. You know how, how at the beach you can mm -hmm. put your feet in the ocean and then the sand. Mm hmm. Wash it away. Buries. Mm -hmm. There's your, your your feet. So, keep now keep that in mind. The fossil found here <laughs> was <clears throat> was deposited first, and it is older. The fossil found here was deposit last. And it is younger. So, this is the geologic column. What do you think about the old geologic column? I think it's guesswork. It's all guesswork. That's right. So, how can you tell the difference between 100 million year old Jurassic limestone? and 600 million years of carbon limestone. How do you tell the difference? By the index fossils. Okay. Like we mentioned before, this is a trilobite. Okay. One of the first animals to come right after the Big Bang. Okay. And then Mr. and Mrs. Trilobite were born. Trilobite fossils, make good index fossils if a tribute such as this one the trilobite is found in rock layer the rock layer was probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago okay but that right there someone stepped on a trilobite. Actually, trilobites are probably still around today in the deepest part of the ocean. So there's a footprint with one embedded in it. Yep. Human shoe print with a trilobite inside found by William Meissner of uh, Karens, Utah in 1968. Trilobites the oldest living organism, our ancestor. Found in a shoe print. Found in a shoe print. <laughs> okay. Wonder which one of them dinosaurs wore shoes. Now, you, you know what they say though? <laughs> they say that uh, there's only one logical explanation for that. Okay. <laughs> you know what it is? The mm -hmm. aliens came and visited planet Earth. You see? Maybe aliens visited the planet and stepped on a trilobite all Got those it. years ago. Mm -hmm. Now someone, um, somewhere was out fishing and they caught a bunch of giant trilobites. They, they were still alive. Now that's interesting. Trilobite eyes have the most sophisticated eye lens ever produced by nature. The eyes are nearly, uh, of early trilobites, have never been exceeded for complexity or acuity. So that's what the trilobite eye would, would look like. Okay. Try to wire that, that eye. Mm -hmm. So we can see. Well, let's, let's go back to that because God created the trilobite, right? Yeah. And if you look at us, we have eyes, and it's pretty remarkable that we can see, right? Mm -hmm. But. If you look at the trilobite side, it's so much more, or a spider, 
-hmm. or um, or a snake that sees in um, heat wave. What, what, what is that called? I don't know. Um, as long as it don't see me, I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so trilobites, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> make good index fossils. The trilobites, such as as this one, found in a rock layer. Uh, the rock layer was probably formed. 506 million years ago. There are many varieties of trilobite. And you know, Don, they all came from one common ancestor. Okay. You know what that was? What was that? It was a trilobite. Yeah. Because if you get, if you read the Bible, the Bible says that they reproduce after their kind, not after their species. You know, you can get bigger and bigger dogs, but you'll never get a dog big as Texas. Yeah. You know? And every time a farmer is farming, he expects to get a cow and get a baby cow, right? You know, he doesn't expect to get a dog or a donkey. <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is what I was looking for. Um, these deep sea... Isopod uh, crustaceans are found in the coastal waters of Florida and Mexico. Mount Blanco Museum found them, found them alive, which is very interesting. And they, uh, they have dozens of uh, Baltic isopods in their museum. And they plug, they plug up the screens in the water um, intake at the uh, Conoco Oil Water Treatment Plant in the Cuprac, Cuprac, Cuprac River. That's pretty interesting. There they are. Yep, grapolites. Index fossils for. 410 million years ago. That's a long time. That, that's a really long time. But there's one problem. Graptolites are still found alive in this specific ocean. So they're dinosaurs. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're prehistoric. Right. <laughs> we covered all that. <laughs> right, yep. Prehistoric. Prehistory. So, here is another one of our com most common ancestors that, you know, we're both related to. <laughs> the lobed fin fish, they're index fossils from 325 to 410 million years ago. And that is lie number four of uh, the low fin fish are still, still alive. alive. Let's see. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah. So, the 325 million year old lobe fin uh, fish. Is still very much alive. That is just fascinating. That's a, you know they're pretty good size. Um, you could probably eat a lot from from one of them. You know, probably good. That's probably probably good eating. So yeah, um, if you ask an atheist or an evolutionist where do we come from, they'll say. A micromolecule. Mm -hmm. So you got the micromolecule up here that came from the prebiotic soup in the second box. And then that's where we all came from. From fish, amphibian, 
reptile to prehistoric mammals all the way to what we are today. Wow. That's a lot of change. Grandpa came from Micromolecule. <laughs> Watch Shrek. Shrek, yeah. <laughs> but the kids will be taught that dinosaurs lived in the Cretaceous over 70 million years ago. Uh, but by the way, when I was a kid, they used to say 65 million years ago. Now they've changed it to 70 million years ago. The question is, why? What happened to all this evolving? I know it. And why don't, why don't we still evolve, evolve any? Remember how, how I told you that there's, um, that the, some of the scientists are finding blood samples in the bones? Mm -hmm. well, a medical uh, pathologist examined a, a dinosaur bone under a microscope and found, what do you find, Don? Dinosaur blood inside the bone. Now, how on earth do you, can you explain that? It didn't evolve. It didn't evolve, no. And, and, laying there. and also, it's not millions of years old. Been laying there for 70 million years. <laughs> Soft tissue discovered in dinosaur bones. You know, if... So if someone or, or something is okay, one million year, one million years old, could that happen? No. Okay. How about one thousand year, years years no. ago? Well, Don, are you telling me that this critter must have died pretty recently? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty recently. That now, that's you know, that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't know how long it takes blood to dissolve, go away. Right. But soft tissue, and, and it's all there. Let me darken this this screen so y'all can take a screenshot of it. It's just it it is very very. Fascinating stuff. There we go. Um, you know that 70 million years. Because it would, if, okay, let's just suppose that it is, that the earth is 4.5 billion years, years old. And let's say what happens when a deer dies. The coyotes and all, they all come and eat it and the bones are all scattered mm -hmm. around. So he didn't get preserved, did he? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's video seven. Uh, so, um, it may be that this isn't unique a, spe a unique se uh, specimen, this find could force scientists to reconsider how all fossils were formed. How about reckoning when they formed? Reconsidering when they formed. Go ahead, Donald. I predict that no one will publish a paper in any major science journal questioning when the fossils formed. This is because the geological column is sacred. It must never be questioned. It is their Bible. Yep. That is their Bible. You know, you know what is their faith? Their salvation is, is time. Because if you take their millions of years away from them, their theory of evolution looks really silly. How about this one? Fossil human hand, hands found in Cretaceous rock. 
that's a pretty old, pretty old hand. 18 million year old magnolia leaves from Idaho. Um, shell, uh, shawl, were still green when the rocks, and when the rock was first cracked open. Fossil bees. Did you catch that? Fossil bees. Bees. Bees are... How can you fossilize a bee? That's pretty fascinating. They were fossilized. Allegedly 25 million years old. That's a that's an old bee. So you got this column right here is 100 million years old. The second column is 200 million years old, and the third 300 to 400 million years old. Now, have you met Charles Darwin? Mm -hmm. Charles Darwin did not like the round numbers, so he had. Uh, so he said. The Weldon deposits in England were very, 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 very old. And I think we are right at 30 minutes, so we're going to end that session there. And we will be right back.